In the last update I showed this Pi Pico connected to this camera board and I just figured out how to get an image off of the camera. And the way I was doing that was by reading out the bytes from the camera board and transmitting them over serial to my laptop and then reconstructing the bytes into an image there, which was painfully slow for any real size of image. Since then, I've added the push button and an SD card reader, sorry, a micro SD card reader, which allows me to capture images and send them to the SD card at the push of a button. So at the moment, this is one of the world's worst digital cameras. It takes um, multiple seconds to capture a relatively low res image on the SD card when you push the button. But it's making progress. And my next step, now that I can capture some images, is to run the calibration and try and undistort the wide angle lens. Whilst I was adding on these components, I took the opportunity to solder on the rest of my connectors. There's two five volt supplies, one for the laser and one for the motor driver board. There's a three volt supply for the logic for the motor driver board. And then there's a four wires here for the motor driver board itself. Adding the micro SD card used up five more pins, which meant I had to rejig things again. Sorry, move the motor controller to a different part of the Pico. I am very low on pins now. I may have two spare up here at GPIO 0 and 1 um, if I don't need the serial, but otherwise, I think this is now maxed out. Now that I've attached the micro SD card to the Pi Pico, I'm capturing the images there but I can move them off onto my main computer for post-processing. Initially, I've started using a widely used package called OpenCV. I'm using the Python version um, to process these images, and I'm going to try and run the OpenCV calibration scripts to remove some distortion from the images because the lens itself is a 160 degree field of view, which is probably far wider than I need, and the edges of the image are very distorted. Now, I don't entirely understand um, what the undistortion is doing yet. Um, I've, I've got a vague understanding that you have orthographic cameras and perspective cameras, and I think what the calibration is doing is it's turning the, the very distorted image into more like a true perspective camera. And I'm using the built-in calibration system based on a printed grid of circular dots. The idea is you capture a number of images and then you can run its algorithm to calculate a series of uh, calibration transforms, which it can then be applied to any image you capture on that camera to undistort the image. I've set up the Pico camera in a vice on my desk and I've set it so that when I press the button, it takes a series of 15 or 20 photos uh, as fast as it can, which is not very fast. And I'm watching it take the photos and moving between them, moving the calibration target around it, what I guess to be its field of view. Because I don't have a real-time feedback or real-time preview of what it can see, I'm very much guessing here on where I'm positioning the target. And if I don't get it right, I can just throw those shots away and take some more. Oh, I should say, it may be confusing, but the video of me moving here is actually from a webcam. This isn't a video taken by the Pi. The Pi is just taking stills. This is an example still image taken by the Pi. You can see I'm moving a bit in it because I haven't got the timing right. And if you notice, my fingers are actually overlapping the target at the top as well. Here I've used the OpenCV blob detector to find and mark the circles based on their location and size and draw those back on the image. In this example it's reliably found all of the circles on the calibration target that it can see and it's not found the one I've obscured with my own hand. It's also found some other false positives around the room of things that it could be black circles. In this image, I've managed not to obscure any of the dots. Once I've applied the OpenCV blob detection, we run another algorithm as part of the calibration suite called the chessboard finder. Uh, it's called chessboard because it can be done on either a chessboard or this 11 by 14 dot pattern. 
if it recognizes all of the dots, it can draw up this rainbow showing the connectivity, which is confirmation that it's, uh, it's found everything correctly. The blob detection algorithm has a series of parameters which can be changed, such as the color, size, and convexity of the blobs that it's looking for. Um, and the chessboard finding algorithm is our convergence-based algorithm, so it has a stopping criteria, which also needs to be tuned. The way that I tuned those parameters was to run both the blob detection and the chessboard finding on all of the sample images I've captured, and then reviewed the images like this one, where it hadn't been able to find the chessboard. In this case, because I'm holding the target so far back, the blob detection isn't finding all of the dots because some of them are beneath the minimum threshold for the blob size. I could adjust this, but I've actually threw away most images like this where the target was so small because I didn't feel they were adding much to the calibration. Some other images where I stood too close to the window, I blew out the contrast so the algorithm couldn't find the spots for that reason. Also, sometimes I was just out of shot. I was having to guess where I thought the field of view was for the camera. After tuning the parameters and throwing away the hopeless images, I ended up with a set of around 30 images in which the chessboard pattern was recognised all around the field of view of the camera. This set of images is fed into the OpenCV calibration algorithm and it uses the changing shape of the grid in the different parts of the field of view to calibrate the distortion matrices that can be used to undistort the images. Let's just pause on one of these images and take a look at the distortion that we're aiming to correct. For example, if you look at the top of the image, the white coving around the top of the room should be a straight line, but is an arch. The soldering station on the desk in the background, the desk looks like it's leaning to the left. And my chair on the right looks very, very narrow. So this is what we should be able to correct for by applying the calculated distortion matrices. I'm doing a slow crossfade now into the same image where I've had OpenCV apply the distortion matrices to correct the image. As you can see, the coving is now straight, the desk and the chair look more normal. There's a gradient of distortion where the very centre of the frame is correct and the edges of the frame are the most distorted but that all needs to be corrected for what I plan to do next in this project. This is actually an older image I captured a few weeks ago when I first got the camera working. But because it's taken with the same camera, I can use my newly calculated undistortion transforms to undistort this image as well. And there's an undistorted view of the same image with a nice square checkerboard behind the object. I still have some work to do to understand how I need to use this undistortion, but having captured these parameters feels like an important step forward. The code for this is all shared on my GitHub as per normal. Thank you for watching, stay safe.